just when I thought the show couldn't possibly get better, it did. Episode 3 of Chainsaw Man is the best looking episode of this year, at least my pick for the best looking episode of this year. Up until now, I kept saying it was Osama Rankings episode 21, but now I'd say it's been dethroned. It's Hironori Tanaka's Chainsaw Man episode 3. Now, I know someone in the comment section was saying that a couple of episodes from One Piece actually look better than those episodes, but I have not watched One Piece, and the rules clearly state that if I haven't watched One Piece, it doesn't count. While watching this episode, I also had like a eureka moment. I finally resolved everything that I was ever looking for. I finally found exactly where and exactly why they're using CGI. Now, everything I talked about CGI in my first video of Chainsaw Man about the first episode, yeah, all of that still stands. But all this time, I was missing one crucial detail that I haven't even seen being posted online anywhere. I individually discovered this. I haven't even seen anyone talk about this on Sakugaburu. But, I mean, maybe it's just an actual obvious thing that's trending on Twitter or something and I just didn't see it. And I look like a fucking idiot claiming that I discovered this. But... Before I talk about that, and before I talk about Hironori Tanaka, the animation director and episode director, I need to talk about things that I missed in the previous episode or mistakes that I made while breaking down the previous episodes. There's one mistake, and it's that the nut-busting Sakuga sequence that was not animated by Tatsuya Yoshihara. That was actually animated by Yoshihide Idue. Everyone thought this was Yoshihara because of the smears. Of course, another reason was that Yoshihara did animate in that episode. So his name was in the credits. Everyone just assumed that this scene was also animated by Yoshihara. It's the same thing that happened with, I think, episode 8 or 9 of My Hero Academia Season 5, where Yutaka Nakamura animated. There was a clip by Yuki Nakosuka, and people just thought it was Nakamura, because Nakamura was credited for this episode, and so they just thought Nakamura is the one who animated this as well. But most importantly, they thought it was Nakamura, because it looked like it was animated by Nakamura. So similarly here, Idue animated a sequence that looked like it was Yoshihara, and Yoshihara was also credited in that episode, so people just thought it was Yoshihara. But then again, a lot of animators use these spiky smears. It's pioneered by, I'd say, Yutaka Nakamura. Look at these smears, for example. So every animator inspired by Yutaka Nakamura and his techniques, being like 50% of all webgen animators, all use these same spiky smears. So just looking at spiky smears, it's no longer a confirmation that it's Yoshihara or any animator for that fact, because a lot of people use spiky smears. Idue is a junior animator, he's not worked on many shows at all, he's only ever worked on MAPPA. Then he worked on Jujutsu Kaisen where he animated this sequence which is like fucking top 5 sequences of Jujutsu Kaisen, no joke, it's that good. Some of the slow character acting, the character shading and the impact frames also kind of remind me of Yutapon. After that, Idue animated in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the climactic sequence he animated alongside Shinsaku Kozuma which he does frequently, like he also animated alongside Kozuma in Dororo. Even in this Chainsaw Man episode, Idue worked on the same episode in which Kozuma also did a cut. So I guess they are pretty good friends who work together like Shun Enokido and uh, Ryo Nakayama do a lot. And yeah, his Jujutsu Kaisen Zero sequence was also amazing. His effect animation was particularly gorgeous. Also with Idue's Gengai, now you can clearly see that um, light falling on Aki's face that I was talking about in the previous episode. So, now, let's talk about the CGI, alright? So, some of the common questions, right? They are, why is the first appearance of the Chainsaw Man in CGI, when in the same episode, a lot of sequences were 2D, especially this sequence, which could have been used as like an opener. Why are the slowly animated sequences, where the Chainsaw Man is pretty close to the foreground, done using CGI, when shots that are really complex with some great animation, done flawlessly in 2D? Once you know this and you know what to look at, it'll be very easy. You won't even need my videos to say what is CGI and what is not, especially because I'll use this episode as an example to explain that as well. I'll also use episode one as an example now. The reason the Chainsaw Man was done in CGI in his first appearance and in most close-ups is to make the chainsaws look like chainsaws. So the way they show the chainsaws are varying, like the rotation mo motion of the blades, is by a pretty neat little compositing effect that makes it look like it's varying. And they can only use that compositing effect with the blades on the CGI model. So the very first time you're showing the chainsaw man on screen, you really have to show that what's attached on his head and his hands are chainsaws. You have to show the rotation motion of the blades, otherwise he's just saw man. You need the chain part of the chainsaw to be there. So this first appearance where the blood effects were animated by Riki Matsura, Chainsaw Man is CGI because you have to show the varying effects. 
So now once you've shown the varying effect, once you've shown that the chainsaw man's chainsaws revolve, our brain will subconsciously make it so that we're seeing the chainsaws revolve even when they're not revolving just because of the sound effect of the varying. So when you look at the 2D sequences in episode 1, animated both by Fujimoto and Yoshihara, you can see that the chainsaws are pretty much still. They are not revolving, they're not rotating. But since we already saw the chainsaws moving in the CGI model, we just think that the chainsaws are moving in the 2D model as well. Especially because these animations are really chaotic, the movements are really fast, so we don't even get to see the chainsaws revolving uh, unless you're going it by frame by frame. So now why can't you just do that in 2D? Why can't you show the revolving motion of the chainsaws in the head and the arms in 2D? And now you can show it if it's like a still image. If the chainsaw man is just standing still, you just animate the blades sequentially and make it move. And you see that in the anime as well. In this shot, probably animated by Tanaka himself, Denji's head is not moving and so he's able to animate the revolving motion of the chainsaw. But now what if it's not a still frame? What if you have to not only animate the movement of the saw, you also have to animate the movement of the arm. So now the animator not only has to animate this, but also has to animate the individually moving blades accordingly with every moving frame of the arm. I hope I don't have to explain why that is extremely difficult. But then why don't they just use CGI on the head and the blades and then put it on a 2D body? They did it in the PV, which is why our expectations were sky high, because they showed it in the PV and they are not doing it in the anime, which is false advertise, shut the fuck up. Alright, in the PV it was full 2D. That head was not CGI. Here's the Genga if you don't believe me, this was shared by Yoshihara on his Instagram. And yeah, that, that's, that's 2D Genga. His head was 2D. There was no false advertising done here. And guess what? Because that Genga was 2D in the first PV, Yoshihara couldn't really animate the chain motion of the chainsaw. The blades of the chainsaw are still in the pre-animated PV. Further proving my point that whenever they have to make the blades move, and especially in close-up shots when you can clearly see the blades move, they'll have to just use the CGI models. Now, I wish I could say that I immediately knew that the shot was full 2D in the first PV when I first saw it, but then I would just be a liar. I thought it was a CGI head on top of a 2D body as well. And that's because when complex mechanical designs are animated really fluidly and really consistently, it ends up looking 3D. It's like the ultimate flex that a 2D animator can pull off. Yo Yoshinari is a good example. Norimitsu Suzuki, another great example. And there's also Bahi. Anyway, so during the close-up sequences of the Chainsaw Man, they have to do him in 3D so that they can show the varying motion of the chainsaws. And for the slow movements of the Chainsaw Man, they have to do him in 3D because it's a really complicated model and it's really hard to consistently animate it in 2D without breaking model. When does CGI look really bad? When it's very close to the camera and when it moves slow. So they're clearly fighting an uphill battle here. They are very, very limited in how they can do this. And I think they're doing this absolutely the right way. They could abandon the idea of having the chainsaws move. If they did not want to do that, then they, they probably don't even need CGI because they just have such a high level of talent. Um, they could just animate the complex model frame by frame 2D, no problem. But because they have to do the varying motion, they have to do it in 3D. And I do think it's the right choice. They have to do that very motion. Come on, it's, it's Chainsaw Man. And especially with this episode, I think they've nailed it. This is easily the best CGI I've ever seen in anime, in the foreground, particularly. And I'm not exaggerating that. This, is, this beats Studio Orange CGI. It looks so fucking good. I, I saw a comment in one of the previous um, videos where the guy just said, if you can tell that it's CGI, you already lost. And I can see why you're saying that, but I don't, I don't agree at all. I just see CGI as another form of art, right? Just because I can tell it's not 2D animation, that doesn't mean it's bad. It would be like saying Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse looks bad because there it's done in CGI and the CGI is made to look like 2D, but it clearly looks like CGI. So they've already lost, which is a very dumb thing to say because Into the Spider-Verse is one of the best pieces of art ever created by mankind. So yeah, there is good CGI and bad CGI and Chainsaw Man has very good CGI now let's finally talk about the episode itself. Gosh, this is going to be a long video, isn't it? The director of this episode is Hironori Tanaka and yeah, he's, he's fucking incredible. I guess I'll talk about him a bit. Hironori Tanaka is a veteran animator. He's one of the most prolific animators in the industry. He made the best looking episode of 2020 with Jujutsu Kaisen's episode 13 
and now he made the best episode so far of 2022. I, I say so far because I know there are some bangers coming up with both Chainsaw Man and Mob Psycho 100. Hironori Tanaka is impossible. And the reason I say that is because he works everywhere and anywhere. He's the true freelance animator. I mean, I'll just talk about his works from 2019 to 2021. All right, so just three years and just look at the different types of works that he's done just in these three years. I'll start with a good one. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, season five. Then he worked on Mob Psycho 100, season two. Then he directed an episode in Azure Lane, animated in Fate Grand Order, animated in A Certain Scientific Railgun, Fire Force Season 2, Fate Movie Heaven's Field 3, then Jujutsu Kaisen where he worked a lot, also worked on Mugen Train, then he worked on Seven Deadly Sins Season 3, Tact of Destiny, Sword Art Online Progressive Movie, and then Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. He's never stayed in one spot for too long until MAPPA has become like this Sakuga house. He worked a lot on Jujutsu Kaisen, did an extended animation direction sequence for the movie, and now is doing a lot of work for Chainsaw Man. You might even see another episode directed by him. And across all of these studios that he worked with, he never lost his style. It was always obvious that it was Tanaka's sequence when he was animating it. Even when he's directing an episode, his entire style brushes off on his entire episode. And we're not talking about animation style in particular. Like when Yutaka Nakamura does animation direction for someone, it just ends up looking like he animated the whole scene because of the extensive corrections that he does. But with Hironori Tanaka, the style of the animators, their animation techniques, they're still there. But what Tanaka corrects are the character designs. Like Jujutsu Kaisen is episode 13. The character detail in that episode was honestly jarring. Tanaka places emphasis on three things that most animators don't like animating, the hair, eyes, and hands. Particularly Tanaka's hair animation is very popular, but the way he draws eyes is pretty much iconic. Like look at this shot of Mahito and compare that to Denji. You don't need to have a sharp eye to notice the similarities here. So we start with this scene and yeah, again, showcasing that the staff is absolutely going all out. Not only are they not cutting corners, they're actually polishing and sharpening the corners. Like this shot on its own, would have been really nice already but then this guy is just coming from this corner here just an extra bit of animation that is not required at all but they put it in anyway similarly these are background characters look at how much detail their clothing has and it's not like they're just moving across the screen either like this guy is rolling up his sleeve that's another bit of motion that you don't need to animate but they take that extra step to make the show look as good as possible. This is stuff that you won't even really see in movies. Even in movies, even when the background characters are animated, maybe even in 2D, they just move past the screen. They don't do anything special. But this was storyboarded by Tanaka that a background character will move across the screen and roll up his sleeve. And that that's really special. And the way it then switches focus, again, background characters keep coming and going, making the scene look supernatural. When I say supernatural, that actually is, means the opposite of what I'm trying to say, right? I'm trying to say that it's very natural and supernatural is the opposite of natural. Funny how English works. But from the very short of Makima, you can see Tanaka touches everywhere. A little bit more emphasis on the nose, which you generally don't see in Chainsaw Man character designs. Tanaka loves noses. Like, look at this cut of his in Jujutsu Kaisen. Pause it. Look at Nobara's nose. And then, yeah, this shot. Um... Uh, that's it's it's really incredible the Tanaka's thin line work that he does and uh, lip sync perfectly animated look at the hair detail there are so many individual strands of hair especially towards the back of her hair it's crazy the level of detail this has the emphasis on eyes it's still there the eye detail is gorgeous here the line work switches this is probably not corrected by Tanaka this cut you can really tell the difference between the style of this cut and this sequence like it's completely different right and the subtle vein her in which her hand is shivering just to show that power is absolutely fucking scared of makima which by the way the anime did that much i think better than the manga because in the manga the panels are just regular makima faces in the anime they really changed that to shots like these again some gorgeous character acting if i have to point out every single one of these character acting segments yeah this video will be a bit too long exceed the youtube maximum video length that's it, I have to talk about this cut. Look at Power's hair. You see the strand, right? This one strand behind her ear. As she's talking, she tucks her chin. And when she does that, that hair 
it falls from behind her ear to the front of her face. Why would you animate that? Why? A solid 10 to 12 seconds of just Makima's ass. And it's not like Makima staying still either. She's crisscrossing her legs in opposite directions. Of course, there needs to be a lot of movement. And of course, the background characters, in this case, Denji and Power, also moving a lot. Again, a drawing that was without a doubt corrected by Tanaka. The multi-layered shadows. Look at this portion of her face, right? There's this shadow that is cast by her um, hand. And this extra shadow because of this finger. This extra finger shadow that she's casting on her face. The darker shadow. And again, the very thin line work with her hair. Clearly done by Tanaka. The extremely high emphasis on eye detail was already there in the show. But Tanaka just dulls it up to 11. Again, I really love how much Power's hair slides al al along her body when she does this. She's just looking down and her all of her hair is sliding in that same direction. And it's just... Yeah, that's just so good. Yeah, some really nice cat animation again. Some really nice petting animation. Yeah, I'm not gonna break down all of these segments. It will take too much time. This character acting segment with Denji was just extremely funny. And Power's reactions to them are <laughs> even funnier. I love the show's humor so much. And yeah, again, this shot. It's very easy to notice which shots were corrected by Hitanaka. Again, this character design was definitely... It's not... does not look like the other episodes, right? And that's because Tanaka changes character designs, as I said before. And it's not just with this anime. He always changes the character designs a little bit. But yeah, again, this shot, so clearly done by Tanaka, I can almost see him draw this. Extremely high detail, individual strands of the hair, with the crazy amount of line work with the body. Clothes already had a lot of folds and crevices in the previous episode, but Tanaka even adds line work to that. Because the sun light is coming from behind, right? So you can't add shadows anywhere over here. So he just adds line work to show the um, wrinkles. Also, the subtle compositing and the CGI work is great. Like these um, handlebars hanging off of this, what do you call it? A road train? A road train is a long truck. I don't know what you call this. Um, the handles, yeah, that they are in CGI and they are moving subtly. Just to show that this thing is moving. But even when you're just looking at Denji, you can see this, those things swaying in your peripheral vision. So that's just great. I also love the shot a lot. Like it shows Denji. And it shows his motivation right beside him. Again, look at these character designs, man. They all kind of look unique. It's awesome. Next is his car segment. When they're moving in the car, the background, it's not just a still image being dragged, which so often happens in anime. And honestly, I'm fine with it. But they still model the entire outside of the car with CGI. Like that's not just a still image being dragged as they're moving. That's an actually full modeled road and buildings outside the car with civilian characters also done in CGI. I can't praise the show enough. It's so good. Also the slight reverberations with the coffee, the attention to detail. I was already missing this 2.5D aesthetic art direction layering and glad to see that making a comeback here. Really good. The art direction here as a whole almost looks watercolor. Now we get to part where Denji gets bonked. Pretty good smears there and the wind animation of Aziz. Just to show that he is swinging the axe really fast is really cool. Some really cool blood morphing animation as well. And then I love how their faces, they have just really neutral expressions. And bonk. And then the delayed blood splatter too. Boom. So I wonder if this blood that's dripping is Denji's blood on Power's hammer. Or if it's just her hammer dripping blood because it's made of blood. Another pretty obviously Tanaka shot. Look at how natural that blood looks. It really looks like what blood would look like when it's dragged across the floor like that. Really realistic, which I don't really even look for, particularly in anime. And yeah, we get to the Bad Devil, one of the most derpy while also threatening looking designs I've seen in anime recently. Tatsuki Fujimoto, hands off to you. Like, you're fucking insane. This looks so threatening while also looking so goofy. I don't know if I should laugh or feel scared about this. And he just fucking squeezes Denji like, uh, so detailed, so visceral. I wouldn't be surprised again if this was animated by Tanaka. Some uh, digital blood mixed in here with the 2D blood effects. But I love the, the way this is, the cutaway is done here. You have a close-up of Denji's hand and then boom, you switch to the bad devil forming his hand. That was pretty sick. How Denji tumbled past the camera and the camera focused on his arm only to then move to the bat's arm. And yeah, 
this morphing animation is sick. The idea of something stuck there with this vein popping out and then this build up and then the spontaneous release is just sick. I think digital effects here as well. Yeah, digital effects mixed in with regular blood. They never use just digital effects. They always mix in digital effects with actual 2D blood animation. And yeah, the level of detail on this devil. I have mixed feelings about this. Like on one hand, it's so impressive that I'm really impressed by it. And on the other hand, like this is what the Titans in the Attack on Titan final season could have looked like if they just had a better schedule. Because this is about, this is definitely more detailed than the Attack Titan. I'm sure the bad devil is harder to animate than the Attack Titan because not only does it have more detail than the Attack Titan, it also has um, completely different proportions. Like the Attack Titan is really just a bigger guy, just human proportions. This is completely inhumane proportions. It's sort of humanoid, but not really. And it's also a pretty complicated model to draw as a whole. So yeah, love the compositing here. Close up of Denji's eyes. The emphasis on eye detail is amazing. Again, I was talking about when they show uh, a shot from someone's memory or someone's perspective, they always show that in first person. This is not the shot we saw in episode two of this scene. We saw a different shot. I think it was a close up of Aki's face and they completely reanimated that scene just to show Denji's memory of it. They could have just reused that animation, but they didn't. And yeah, this is the shot from one of the trailers and looks just as good. And again, the, le the amount of background characters moving, they all have really detailed models. They all look completely unique. This, this is just fucking incredible. Look at the uh, running cycle on this guy just jogging in the background. That is so well animated. And these two girls in the foreground as well. They look so nice. The background characters in Chainsaw Man look more unique than the main characters in Horimiya. Like this is not like most slice of like shows where if you want to show two different characters being different, just give them different colors hair and go through all the colors, fucking uh, brown, pink, um, green. Yeah, people have green hair, right? Um, a purple, because that's another natural color, red. These two characters, while they do have different colored hair, even if they didn't have different colored hair, they already do look different enough just from the faces. And that's crazy because I don't think these girls are ever going to appear in the show ever again. These are just background characters appearing for this one cut. And yeah, it's incredible the amount of character design work that's going into this. Probably done by these sub character designers. There are probably a lot of sub character designers working on the show. And even every cut is done by talented animators, right? So they probably just come up with their own character designs for their cuts. Because there's every cut is done by ta animators so talented that they're also talented enough to do character designs. So everyone's character acting is so good. You can even tell their personalities just from the character acting, man. The show is insane. Again, the bad devil's um, mane, you could say, I guess. And the ears, they just have to sway in the wind because why not? Again, that's this is the most intimidating face while also being the most derpy face I've ever seen. And it's Miaoi the most unique name for any cat ever. And we get to this backstory with power, a lot of detail on power and that's not, yeah, definitely the dirt is compositing. The line work, you can see these line hatching lines here. Those are animated, drawn on her, but um, the dirt is compos is a compositing effect. I can, I saw that here. Look at how her jaw is moving, but the dirt is not. See that? Her jaw is moving, but the dirt in this portion is not moving accordingly. Whereas, um, look at her shoulder here with the line work. When her shoulder is moving, those lines are also changing accordingly because those lines are individually drawn by an animator who's also drawing the shoulder. And since the one who's animating the jaw is not the same as the person who's adding the compositing layer, the compositing layer stays still as the jaw moves here. And some more really cool shots. Uh, uh, this shot, again, it's a direct improvement over the manga. In the manga, is just one cow <laughs> dead in the middle of nowhere and this like it's all it looks like a farm so yeah i think it's better meowie turns into a super chunky boy damn look at that detail man that's some really good compositing it mixes so well mixes so flawlessly with the line work as well yeah it's gorgeous fantastic art direction again that's got to be one of the best looking skies i've ever seen um yeah this is up there with like um the sky detail that Attack on Titan has with both MAPPA and with Studios. Both have amazing art direction. 
Yeah, all of these shots are so good. And I, I don't know why she doesn't fight back against the bad devil. Maybe it's because she's the blood devil and that's the bad devil. So there's some sort of a dynamic there that hasn't been explained yet. Maybe she didn't fight the bad devil here because it, it's holding Miaoi hostage. But yeah, really cool short transition here. Love the shifts in the coloring and the compositing as the bad devil's hand reaches out to grab power. Also love these extra added debris animation. Yeah, the swaying of the wings, so fluidly animated, like cloth animation. Again, just ch check out this attention to detail, right? Like here, Denji's on the bad devil's leg. So I wanted to check if they actually animate him getting on the leg, and they do. Like here, as uh, the bad devil is taking off, in the final few frames, there it is. Denji's hand, that just pops up from the bottom there. He grabs the bad devil, and as the devil is flying away, yeah, there, there's Denji. <laughs> of course, they wouldn't miss something like that. I did not catch that the first time I watched this, but yeah, you have to go through that frame by frame to see something so small. They did not have to animate this, right? They absolutely did not have to animate Denji grabbing that, but they did because it's a perfect adaptation. How many times did I have to keep saying that? And this might sound weird, but this is my favorite cut from the episode. And the reason is the hair detail. Look at Denji's detail as a whole, like the facial detail. This is the most detailed Denji's face has looked ac across these three episodes. As I said before, Chainsaw Man characters, they don't have a lot of detail with the skin. But then look at this skin. There's deep shadows, effects with the blood. There is hatching and then the hair. Look at the individual amounts of hair strands. This would already be a hard drawing to make. And it moves. This is absolutely incredible hair movement. I don't even think it's looped hair animation. The hair animation is okay. It is looped hair animation. I guess they animated around five or six drawings and they just loop it, but that is still insane. Again, I always tend to fawn over the small stuff like a Yutaka Nakamura scene where he animates Bakugo escaping. Yes. The short composition is incredible. Yes. The impact frames are amazing. Yes. The background animation is top of the line, but I'm also super impressed by the way just Bakugo's hair moves in the wind. Yutapon is just animating that in once and he's had to animate so many different drawings. Stuff like that is just really impressive to me because animators don't really have to do that, but they do that anyway. Some amazing character acting with the fucking bad devil. I love the storyboards here. Yeah, the way the focus is kept on Denji, that must be really disorienting. And yeah, that's conveyed via the motion. It's really well done. Yeah, fucking incredible. The next card is Denji putting the card. But before that scene, I need to talk about this scene. This is easily the best animated scene of this episode. Um, not because it's particularly impressive, but because it has Pochita. Next, we get to Denji pulling the card. Uh, many people, including me, thought this was Yoshihara with Tanaka corrections because of these smears, right? The jagged line smears. But Yoshihara is not credited. So this is currently credited to be Toru Iwazawa's work. It's not confirmed. Yeah, it's still only presumed to be um, Toru Iwazawa's work, but it's probably him because he's another Utapon style animator and he doesn't hide it at all like he's a straight up Utapon fan. This I would say is probably his most muted work if this is him. And yeah, that's probably because of heavy Tanaka corrections as you can probably see here like this cut, right? Yeah, this is just straight up absolutely corrected by Tanaka with the face here and the eye. That is Tanaka's eye. And um, as, as soon as people saw this in the trailer, I think it was the third trailer, people were saying that, yeah, this is done by Tanaka because of how much it does look like Tanaka. But the smears, they don't look like Tanaka smears. So yeah, this is probably Tori Wazawa's work, but because this is the only sequence that even looks somewhat like Yutapon inspired with the smears and effects and such. So yeah, and yeah, the uh, way the chainsaw is moving here, it's shown really well. And the reason they're sh able to show the chainsaw revolving is because it's barely moving, first of all. And it's because the portion where it's connected, it's not specified. There's blood hiding that area. But yeah, that's one of the only instances where you'll see the chainsaw actually revolving while it is 2D. Denji's head and the chainsaw itself, they're not moving. It's just a panning shot. So the revolving is easier to animate. And we get a close-up of that eye here. One of the most basic impact frames I've ever seen in my life. And then we get a negative impact frame, really cool looking. And we see the Chainsaw Man emerging from here. Just two frames of a full 2D Chainsaw Man and just an explosion of blood effects. So beautiful. It's full 2D blood too. And yeah, uh, the jagged Utapon style smears. Love the storyboards here. Love the eye correction here. 
like uh, when light is reflecting to us the compositing is shifting accordingly so that our eyes can adjust to the light and yeah the slice is shown by again some really cool looking impact frames and then sliced open emerges cgi dingy from others yep that's cgi chainsaw man and yeah uh, again hyper detailed close-up and again look at that they need to show the revolving motion which is a compositing effect so they use the cgi this is a full cgi model everything here is cgi maybe the tie is 2d i'm not sure let me check is this portion 3d as well that that's impressive if this portion is also 3d but this portion is 3d and the head is obviously cgi yeah and this is again cgi so yeah a very cool cut by Toru Iwazawa. i don't know if it's him but it's probably him i don't see any of the other cuts in this episode being Iwazawa. and this is just some chick grabbing her notebooks and she's organizing them putting them together as she's putting them down you can see action lines added because why not it's a girl arranging her books that needs to have really high quality sakuka right i mean this is like literally cinema quality every single cut is done with absolute perfection um here denji and her hair animation is awesome really cool debris and smoke effects you'll see hear me say that so much in this episode the most impressive thing first of all is the titan animation of the bad devil i'll just call it titan animation and the smoke and debris there's so much smoke and debris sakura and it's always incredible all the animators just did the smoke effects and debris effects for their all allocated cuts and yeah it all always looks so good like even in this cut it looks so incredible except in this cut they forgot to composite it like this just looks like the genga this is probably the what the smoke looks like in the Genga. It's probably colored, but yeah, they forgot to add compositing to it. It looks very raw. If you look here, it looks semi-transparent, or I could just say translucent. And from this translucent smoke, it just switches to this extremely opaque, raw-looking smoke. And that just transitions to, again, smoke with pretty translucent compositing. And the shift is very abrupt. Look at this. Look at that. They forgot the to add the compositing here. And then they brought back the compositing here. So this is an error that will be fixed in the Blu-ray without a doubt. Just a short compositing error. And again, Denji's chainsaw, they need to show the revolving motion of the chainsaw. So he's full 3D here. Some awesome character acting with a background character we'll never see again. Gosh, it's so impressive. This scene confused me a lot when I saw this for the first time because this looks like Thor's hammer. And I was wondering, hey, what's Mjolnir are you doing there? This CGI model of Denji not the best i still think shirtless denji is better than this but the cgi model that they have towards the end with the open shirt denji that is the best cgi model it's so so good i'll talk about it when i get there and denji punches the bat with his chainsaw does not really use it as a chainsaw because the chainsaw aren't chainsaws aren't running right now the blades aren't running so he just punches it if it was running there he could have probably just killed the devil there again cool smoke cool debris those spark effects are digital yep digital spark effects they kind of stand out like a sore thumb in motion motion it's much better except in this cut yeah in this cut these effects still kind of stand out yeah if they had um 2d electricity effects with that it would look better again this cut is the embodiment of everything i've been saying so far um denji comes down right denji comes down you have to show the um revolving motion of the chainsaws on his arms so his arms are done in cgi his legs they're done 2d because his legs don't have chainsaws in them i wonder if his legs can turn into chainsaw i would assume yeah maybe maybe that's gonna be some sort of a reveal later on in some fight that his legs can turn into chainsaws the easiest way to notice that this is cgi is from the blood these small blood effects that you can see here it does not look like blood they could work on that they could work on the coloring of that it should be redder it's kind of pinkish right now. You'll see that clearly in episode one. Some of the blood just looks like paint on Denji's body. Here, it switches to full 2D and it does not even look like the chainsaws are moving. Because as I said before, it's really hard to animate that. But our brain just assumes that the chainsaws are revolving because we just saw the chainsaw revolving in the previous cut. So that's why you're using CGI. Another thing that's very impressive is that every time the bat is going to move, blood is going to keep spurting out of his arm. It's not just going to heal immediately which is just super sick just to add some extra effects animation right with the liquid so sick again extremely highly detailed model moving so fluidly god i wish attack on titan looked like this 
just fucking squashes and stretches those blades to the absolute limit. Six meters. It looks like rubber the way he's animating that. It's so sick. And I also love the sound effects here. Denji's uh, panting like a dog coming to a stop using the chainsaws. It's actually leaving trails on the road too. Really cool spark effects. Amazing smears as I said before. The sense of speed here is amazing. Kaito Tomioka, I think it's a, he's pretty young as an animator, right? Yeah, years active 2017 to percent. So five years in the industry so far. One of the many animators who got into the industry via Tatsu Yoshihara in Black Clover. So that makes sense that he'll be working here as well. And this cut is great. I don't really like the compositing here. It looks really flat textures, but I guess they're just going for the realism effect here. It's not that it's poorly composited, but because of the way right, light is reflecting off of his head, it looks kind of weird. But then in this cut, it looks perfectly fine. Yeah, that's full 2D. And to animate it that level of detail is just amazing. Again, he's trying to make it look like the chainsaws are moving, but it still doesn't really look like the chainsaws are moving. He's doing it by making these smeary motions here. The blades don't look like sharp blades. They look rectangular because they're moving. But again, he's not really animating those motions because they're almost impossible to do. I just realized I wasn't full screen. And yeah, the camera is too slow to catch up to Denji, but then there's inertia. So Denji slows down and then the camera catches up to him. And then the camera loses him because he's too slow now. So a lot of interesting camera work in this episode. And cool blood effects with um, digital blood mixed in with it, as usual. Another really impressive cut. What do these punches remind me of? These really weighty punches. Honestly, yeah, they remind me of Levi vs. Beast Titan, the Beast Titan cut. Or these cuts where they focus on moving with the arm looks a lot like that cut of Arifu Mimai. And I think they reference that a lot for this episode. I, this is just like Levi vs. Beast Titan, but on crack, right? I saw a lot of complaints saying that this fight was not well choreographed. And I, I don't really understand what you were expecting. I can only speak for myself and I wasn't really expecting Denji to do Wing Chun and the Bad Devil to do Karate. No, like this is the fight between an oversized derpy bat and a guy who has chainsaws on his head and both of his arms. You can't really choreograph this fight. It's a spectacle fight and they do that really well. It really does feel like an extended version of Levi vs. Beast Titan. And as he punches the ground, again I have to talk about the level of detail here. Gosh. Look at that detail. That, that must have been so hard to animate. It's all animated in twos as well. Not even in threes. This is completely done in twos. And it switches to ones here. Oh my god. It must have been so hard to animate. Ah, Again, e extremely good smoke and debris animation. I think this smoke, this smoke looks like it was corrected by Tanaka. The way the smoke is pulsing through is really awesome. Way one. Wave 2, wave 3. Wave 3 hits the electric lines. So there's a little bit of spark there. And the shock hits the building. So the building explodes. So the traveling of the shock is so well done. Again, it's one of my favorite sequences. Like any sequence where smoke is dissipating around a character. I really like that. Again, you have to show the motion of the chainsaw blades here. So the entire chainsaw man is done in CGI. I love the motion of the tie. So well done. The fabric animation is really good with the CGI model. And yeah, again, the only reason this is done in CGI is because they need to show the revolving motion of the chainsaws. Again, the way the bad devil emerges from the smoke. So well done. Again, such a fucking derpy face. And he blocks it with a kick. Pretty cool to see a CGI model interacting with a 2D model. And yeah, boom. Really cool smears added with the 3D model, like these. Yeah, those are really cool smears. I really like, I, I dig those a lot. Smears on 3D models look very good. Smears on anything look very good, but on 3D models is particularly impressive, right? And I also love how his motions cause the smoke to dissipate around him. Are those multiples? Wow! That's a multiple. Look at that. That's a piece of Denji's hand there. And that's the rest of his arm. That's a multiple with a CGI character model. That is insane. I wonder if the CGI animators are in charge of that, or if the 2D animators work on that. I have no idea. Because CGI is done by a completely different department, right? Yeah, this is easily surpassed affordable levels of CGI. Affordable levels of foreground CGI. Yeah, this is reaching Studio Orange territory at this point. Again, this is done in full CGI to show the revolving motion. But now, there's a cut 
that shows the revolving motion, but is done in full 2D, which is this one, which again looks really sick. And it's only possible because the model is staying still here. And just the still image, by the way, so detailed. The individual wires, the detailing of those wires, the clothing in the side, the teeth, the shading, the scratches. And on top of that, the chainsaw motion is also great. Even here, you can see that the chainsaw, mo chainsaw is moving by like, they're just vibrating the chainsaws. Yeah, they're just sort of vibrating the chainsaw and makes it look like the chainsaws are moving. Again, the sense of scale here is perfect. Scale is really hard to animate. I guess I'll talk about that as well. Like when you see something like this, what you're seeing is a giant foot coming to crush Denji. But this could be interpreted in so many ways. This could mean, this could just be like a regular sized bat that is close to the camera, so the leg is big. And Denji is farther, very far away from the camera, so he's small. This could be interpreted like that. But to give a very good idea of the sense of scale, because of the techniques they're using, because the bad devil has been shown to have a lot more weight than Denji with all of his movements. Like the way he takes a step back here. Yeah, as he takes a step back here, as he puts his foot on the ground, that causes a pretty big crater on the ground. So through animation techniques, it's wired into our brain that this thing is big and Denji is small compared to that thing. When these are all just 2D models who can be big or small, depending on how they're screened in the shot. Giants are really hard to animate. To give the sense of scale, it's just really well done. I also really love this cut. This is again full 2D. At this point, they're, just, they're, just an, they're not even animating the individual blades. This is animating at one streak to make it look like it's moving. Doesn't really work. It's still kind of static. But again, it's kind of impossible to draw all those individual blades moving. And again, as I said before, to us, it feels like it's moving because we just saw it move. We just saw it move here and they didn't have to, even have to use CGF for it. Amazing storyboarding here. Yeah, that's such a well done shot. I love it. Just very immersive with the way Denji dodges the fate very close to the camera. Force that's emitting because of the kick and the effects animation here. Can really feel the power in the kick. Again, when the bat falls down, leaves the gigantic crater again. Even though it's a pretty quick motion. Yeah, even though it's a pretty quick motion, leaves the gigantic crater. Denji uh, CGI here again to show the motion of the chainsaw. Again, I love the shot. It's like we're inside the car right now. And that's so sick. We are moving with the car. Yeah, so the guy is always kept in shot. So how do they make it feel like the bad devil is picking him up, even though the guy is not moving at all? You use the background movement for it, and the background is shifting. The background is shifting down. And so the guy is moving up, is what we perceive it as. He flings the car. Is the car 2D when he flings it? Let me check. That's, that's a 2D car. Yeah, that's definitely a 2D car. It's barely animated. It's shifting a little bit in perspective, but barely animated because cars are very complex mechanical designs that are hard to draw in 2D. Again, still 3D and his chainsaws just retract to show that the stop, to show the stop motion smoke just dissipates when Denji comes to a stop. That is just so sick. Again, this CGI shot looks really good. Another full 2D shot. And now it switches back to 3D. Yeah, look at that. It's a full 3D shot. Why is it 3D? Oh, look at that. Because they need to show the movement. They need to show the movement of the chainsaw. That's why it's 3D. Really, if the shot, if the shot stopped here, like if this is the only, if this is the only portion that we could see of Denji's body, then this would have been done in full 2D. But because we can also see the chainsaw, and because you, it's a very slow shot, so you want to make the chainsaw look like it's moving because it's very close to the camera and it's a slow shot, it's done in CGI. And I don't really like how this was done. It looks like Denji threw it through the car with very little force. But then when it switches to this, the Riki Mansura's animation, it's just boom. It's just very forceful, very fast. In the manga, right now is when the guy jumps off. Anyway, this is the Riki Mansura's animation. A, lo a really long pause. Mini holds on it to on many frames and then just explodes that with beautiful looking impact frames. And look at that. Riki Mansura animating fire. Riki Mansura is good at animating fire. Who could have seen that coming? I love the smoke over here too. Yeah, like pretty cool style with the way it's animated and the character acting with the bat as it's trying to frantically put out the flames. It's so sick, so well done. And then the bat's mouth turns into like a flashlight, uses a sound based move. Look at those, yeah, look at those pencil lines 
clearly pencil lines and the exaggerated puff of the chest, something big is coming. You see that. You literally see that because of the puff of the chest. And then, boom, explosion of energy. These negative frames look really good. And then the sound waves just blasting off with the sonic boom also forming with, again, Riki Mercer's incredible effects animation, which mixes really well with this 3D model as well. This is 2D here, but this is 3D. Yeah, just look at this pose and yeah, oh, incredible debris animation as well. Uh, the compositing here is not doing the animation much justice though. Like, yeah, this, this is just a little bit too much blurring. Yeah, you can barely see Riki Matsuro's beautiful effects here. If you look at the Genga, the effects are much more clear here. And yeah, the anime is compositing kind of ruined it. But then again, this is a sound-based move. So the blur really emphasizes the power there. And if you look at the Genga, it still looks powerful. But the final version with the blur looks more powerful. I would have still preferred if it was unblurred so that I could get to see Riki Matsuro's beautiful effects in all of its glory. It's not objectively bad blurring. And then we use an impact frame to transition to Hayato Kurosaki's cut. And yeah, the, the sheer quantity of debris here, fucking unreal. There is so much debris. It honestly looks like a fucking Nozumuabe cut with the level of debris here. And the smoke also crazy. The bat's um, ears and mane has been moving throughout. I also love this fisheye effect to really emphasize the destruction. Because you can see that the, it's distorted at the end, edges here of the buildings. Yeah, this is just so fucking sick. It's insane. Again, more spoke animation, more electricity animation when the lines are breaking. Insane debris animation as well. Also love how the smoke is dissipating around this guy. Always love that. Always love myself some smoke dissipation. Look at that. It's, it's like the smoke is the symbiote leaving the body so it's sticking as it gets removed. Again, some really cool smoke dissipation here. Uh, Denji's foot comes out and the smoke parts around his foot. And when he puts the foot on the ground, the pressure from that dissipates the smoke. So cr crazy. And really good cloth animation. And look at that. The chainsaw is revolving and it's animated in 2D. The reason it's possible is again because the chainsaw head is staying still here. So you only need to draw the thing in from one perspective. If his head was moving here, you need to draw the chainsaw moving as well. And you will also need to draw the individual blades moving in different perspectives with respect to the chainsaw blade, which is what makes it impossible to do. But here, since the head is staying still, you can draw the chainsaw and he's animating the blade moving as well in 2D. Yeah, this whole sequence is sick. Non-stop smoke animation and this effect of the blood just sawing through Denji's arm is just so sick. I love it. It's so well done. Yeah, the rings of blood because of the explosion of chainsaws coming through his arms, sawing through his arms. That is just so sick. I fucking love it. It's so well done. And I think it looks better here than it did in the trailer uh, because I think it's slightly sp sped up here as compared to the trailer. The same number of drawings held for a little bit less number of frames. So it looks a little bit fluider here. That was probably done to match the trailer's timing. And here it's done just to make it look as good as possible. So yeah, this just looks sick. The level of detail again. And the shifts, constant shifts in perspectives are also awesome. As Denji opens his mouth, the spit just exploding out so sick. The shift in perspective is awesome. His arm is so big that it's going through the entire verticality. It's covering the entire vertical side of my screen. And you move all the way here. The blade is also humongous. Yeah, this perspective is crazy. Again, multi-layered shadows on his abs here. Hironori Tanaka special. Then we cut, you switch to his... Which arm is this? Left arm? Look at the detail again with the line work. Fucking crazy. Fuck, man. This is so good. I love it so much. And then it switches again to 3D to make it look like the chainsaws are moving. Because in this case, again, when he's actually moving here, you never see the chainsaws actually moving. Look at that. The chainsaws don't look like they're revolving at all. Even in the still frame, the chainsaw blades don't look like they're moving at all. So it's just animated like a flat texture here to make it look as if they're moving because we already saw them moving over here. So it is just that illusion to make it look like they're moving all the time, which is very important. 
otherwise, yeah, he won't be chainsaw man. As I said before, it needs to be chainsaw. Again, with this close-up, this needs to be CGI because the chainsaw needs to be shown as, as if they're moving. And this is the best CGI model I've ever seen in anime, at least for the foreground. This is so fucking incredible. The cloth physics is so well done. I guess they copied it from the Arkham series or something because this is so sick, man. It's animated in threes. It's animated in threes and it still looks really fluid. And just the fact that they're willing to make a whole CGI model for this one scene, right? This is shirtless. Look at the niche here. Denji with shirt on, unbuttoned, torn in both arm areas with blood on. That's the niche here. And they made a whole CGI model to fit that niche. That's the opposite of being lazy. They're willing to make so many different CGI models just to make it look like the chainsaws are always moving. Also love the shot here. Not only is the level of detail incredible, I love how the compositing shifts. The background makes no sense here. The background is super dark so that the light can focus, fall on um, the bat's face here. It's almost as if I do this. This is what Tanaka is doing with the shot. And also I just realized that I hadn't, didn't have my light on this entire time. So I might as well just switch it off at this point. But yeah, that is what Tanaka is doing here. Probably gave instructions to the compositing shaft to do it that way. And yeah, the shot works perfectly because it's a gray face in front of a gray background and it still pops out really well because of the compositing. He grabs a rock. It looks like a tiny rock, but then again, our brain is like, wait a minute, that's a gigantic hand. So that's a pretty big rock. Love the shot here. Slowly pans backwards and we see Denji. Initially 2D here with the smears. And here, I think it's already switching to 3D. It's already switching to 3D here. And again, the cape animation is so incredible. Fucking awesome cape animation, dude. Yeah, that is just so well done. I love that cape animation. Some sick looking frames here. Almost Koki Fujimoto-esque frames. Saws through, are those smears? Yeah, look at those arm smears here. Smears on his hand. This is a CGI model. And they're using complex smears on his hands here. That's such, just as a smooth cut. Literally, such a smooth cut. Yeah, the haymaker fish is coming down. Again, very reminiscent of Levi vs. B Titan-esque storyboarding that Arifumi Imai did. Starting from his face, and then focus shifts to his fist. Digital effects maybe? Yeah, digital effects here mixed in with the actual blood effects. And this is again CGI because again, this is slow, right? Yeah, the, it's a bit slow. So your eye has enough time to notice that the see notice to check whether there's chainsaw is moving or not. And therefore it's done in CGI because they have to sh do it in CGI to show the chainsaw moving. I'm, I've said this so many times, I might have to edit if some of the times out so that it does not get repetitive. But anyway, this looks kind of awkward because it's such a highly detailed model placed very far away from the camera. So it, it's very compressed here, right? The line work looks very thick here. Look at the next frame. Look at how thin that line work is compared to this. So as I've said before, if it's a 2D model and if it's placed further away from the screen, you can just adjust the line work, just make thin line work and it won't look awkward. But with CGI models, you can't do that. The CGI models have a fixed line work and especially with the model, this detail has a lot of line work and when it gets compressed, the line work pops out a lot. So this looks a little bit unnatural. And this is another shot from the trailer, it looks sick. Look at those. Look at these poses again. These poses are so sick. Explosion of blood effects and he, from inside emerges Denji. And he hits him in the face with the chainsaw, I guess. This is some really unique background animation because it's moving pretty slowly. Look at this background animation, right? It's moving very little, but then it zooms past the screen very fast. So almost like Ute upon like timing with the background animation. I really like it. Also a uni very unique storyboarding choice to show this from the front view. Yeah, we are moving forward with the Bad Devil as he's being thrown back. Yeah, <laughs> the most derpy looking face you'll ever see. Again, some sick background animation. Uh, it's artist unknown for now. We don't know who animated this, but definitely Hironori Tanaka connection, corrections here. As he jumps off, the wind animation to just show that explosion of energy, which has been consistent throughout this episode, the debris animation, the smoke animation, animation of the impacts and stuff, so well done. I also love how the, the cross flare here, 
also has that the ring of light kind of effect that you would get from natural sunlight. Again, look at this. It looks like a kid. Oh. <laughs> That's CGI, I think. Let me check. That is 2D. God damn. Tanaka going the extra mile of having all of the chainsaws individually animated. All three of the chainsaws are in frame right now. And they all have the revolution motion animated in 2D. This cut is amazing. Again, super close up of the eye to show Denji's eye. And then you see like a mixture of the cross flare and Denji's eye as part of the reflection in the bat's eye. That's just really clever storyboarding. Close up of bat's eye, switch to Denji's eye. Denji's eye color is like, I say like a deep yellow and you get a deep yellow crossfire on the bat's eye to show that Denji's coming. Slash here. Again, this drawing is just so fucking insane. Um, Chainsaw Man is CGI, right? I can't tell man, it's so good. Yeah, it's CGI. Helps that this is the best CGI model they've ever created. I think the legs could be 2D here. I think only the upper body is CGI. The legs might be 2D here. Actually, I'm pretty sure now that the legs are 2D and the upper body is CGI. Not the first time they've done it, but yeah, looks so sick. How can you say this CGI model looks bad? This looks insane. This is wallpaper material. In fact, this is wallpaper material. Damn, I, I really want the Genga for this, man. And yeah, just the explosion of digital blood mixed with 2D blood mixed with guts and gore. So insane. This switches to 2D again. I mean, it was always 2D. I mean, it's 3D, I mean. And this is still 3D. Look how fluid that motion is. So sick. And when the bat falls down, that causes like a boom effect, which again causes Denji's cape to flutter in the wind. Sick ass 3D animation. So good. Oh, look at the shot. Oh man, this looks so sick. Look at the detail and the blade as well. Like the coloring, the coloring and compositing with this shot is incredible. Yeah, this would have been what the Chainsaw Man looks like throughout the anime if they didn't want to make it look like the chainsaw was actually moving. I still think it's a good decision to make the chainsaw look like it was moving. And even if you have to use CGI for it, yeah, it's fine. I think it's great. It's not even over. We have the ED now, and this is my favorite ED of the year. I'm sorry, Miyusato, your paint on glass animation for Mob Psycho 100 is incredible. I will break that down. That was gonna be ED of the year. In fact, I'm probably just gonna title that as ED of the year if I make a video on it just for the clicks. But boy, I like this more. This is so amazing. This is CGI. Very well done. And yeah, that's such a creepy face. Yeah, the way it synchronizes with the music is so good. These inky effects animation is so good too. I love the music. Probably my favorite ending in terms of music. Like when I heard of Chainsaw Man, right? Chainsaw Man just sounds like such a metal concept. I thought um, the end opening, I thought the best options would be either Maximum the Hormone or Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I love them from Hunter Hunter. I love them from Parasite, but Maximum the Hormone are also really cool. I loved them on Death Note and yeah, it's like they never left. How long ago was Death Note? Death Note was 16 years ago. But yeah, this is sick. Love the imagery here. Almost looks like a background that I would see in Madoka Magica. But then again, extremely gritty. Behind Aki is Makima on one side and I think his girlfriend on the other side. Then we have power. I think we're seeing the character motivations beside them because we see Miaoi right next to her. So sick. I love this cut. And then we have Denji, chainsaw. Makima on the chainsaw. Pulls the card. Sick looking shot of the Chainsaw Man. Some amazing impact frames. This These look like uh, the manga PVs that Chainsaw Man has. This looks like it was ripped straight out of that. Amazing. But look at this, this is so good. There were a bunch of animators who worked on this and I don't know any of their names. I'll just put their respective animators name on top and it forms like a ring, multiple rings. What could those rings be? It's Makima's eye. And that uses transition to show the rumbling. Uh, what the fuck is this? And yeah, love this cut. I wonder what this was at first, but then we get to see that this is actually the visual representation of Pochita inside Denji. This is Pochita in its heart form. Yeah, the imagery is just so sick. Wow, this might be a 3D background. This might be a 3D background that's heavily composited. Yeah, it almost looks like something I'd see out of Dorohe Doro. This animation is just so sick, man. 
This must have taken so much time. I'm, I'm not just talking about the animation. This must have taken so much time in post to work on it. And the, the music, the way it mixes with the music is so sick. And uh, Aki does the hand sign. This is the hand sign for the dog that Fushiguro also does. He doesn't do this hand sign, he does a double-handed hand sign for the dog. But yeah. Yeah, these inky drawings, they are so good. Fucking painting come to life. And then for the next time, when the voice drops, I could, you could say, you actually see that dog. Right? So I guess this is Aki's power. He can summon giant dog with multiple renegons. So it must be very powerful. Yeah, the paintbrush aesthetic never goes away. It's so sick. Yeah, this is the level of compositing that's been done to this is insane. Wait, what the fuck? Burkreek, Benjamin Farr, Tam Lu, and Chris. Oh, Chris is Yen Yen. Oh, okay, this, these are the opening credits. Yeah, this, yeah, 10, 10, 10 plus 10. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, what, what was I saying? Yeah, I was talking about the heavy compositing. Heavy compositing, the, just the level of layering that's been done here. If you look at the Genga, the animation is still one-to-one, -one, but it's been completely converted into something surreal. And yeah, even in this animation, the chainsaws are not actually moving if you look at it frame by frame. So there's a shark head guy in the corner. Don't know who this is. This is Power. And this is probably Denji. And that's the angel girl also in the opening. And then the uh, abruptly switch to Makima. And the animation style just completely changes. It looks like an oil painting. Almost like oil painting aesthetic. Denji is completely naked here. So it's like Adam in front of uh, Virgin Mary. Goes back to the chaos again. Love these shots, man. I wish the art direction for the show actually looked like this. Instead of going for hyper-realism. I could totally watch an entire show with art direction that looks like this. Again, to show the representation of Pochita as part of his heart. Really nice. Again, really cool 2D shot of Chainsaw Man with the chainsaws. They're not moving. Just the individual blades pointing out. And yeah, you zoom past. That's it. That's Chainsaw Man. That is Chainsaw Man's episode 3. Incredible fucking episode. Hironori Tanaka did an incredible job. All of the animators working also did a fantastic job and the ending looked sick. I think I've broken down it in as much detail as I could possibly do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't want this channel to just only be about Chainsaw Man for the next developer for three months. I don't want this to be exclusively about Chainsaw Man for the next three months. So I'm going to mix and match stuff. I'll make... Uh, Mio Sato's paint on glass animation video next. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. If you liked it a lot, subscribe and share it with your friends who might also like it. And that's about it. Thanks for the views.